Hi guys, welcome back to First Code Academy. And today we'll continue on our series of how to build a city in Roblox. In today's video, we'll take a look at how to build roads, how to set them up in the city, and how to design strategically how to build our roads first to place our buildings in a later stage. I hope you like this video. Remember to like and subscribe. So for today's chapter, I made a couple of changes, uh, not very major. Well, the first, the only change substantial I have made since live chapter was I extended the base plate because I want to play around with some of the road elements we can include into a Roblox project. The reason I did this is because I don't want to interfere in the main city. So what I did was just go into the base plate over here and change the size. I kept the height the same, 20, but I changed the dimensions to 2000 and 2000. This is not permanent, of course, and remember in the end, I will get rid of the base plate. But for now, I'm just gonna leave it like that because I want to place the temporary elements there and play around with the road placements first to then show you what it's going to look like in the end. Now, before I do anything else, I will do, do something so I don't get confused in the future. It's good practice that if you are going to make a new project and you want certain parts of the world to be unique or to differentiate them from the other parts, to rename them. So you can click again on the name here. And I'm going to change this one to the, not really a base plate again, but I'm going to rename it as just base. Right. Uh, this is so in the future, when I get rid of the base plate, I can extend this, make it thicker. So it looks more like an actual base element of the floor, you know. Uh, another good reason to do this, to make it thicker, it's something called clipping. And in video games, clipping means when your character uh, moves at a certain speed or a certain angle so that the program fails to calculate in its next position. And imagine here is a wall and here's your character. And sometimes you gain certain speed at a certain angle. And then the game calculates as if it passed through the wall without like hitting the wall exactly in the matter of a fraction of a second. It is, this is pretty rare, but it might happen and it will lead to some like weird behaviors in your game. So usually you want them to be thick enough so that no matter if it goes like really fast, the next position will be inside the wall and the game will know to push it back and not let it go through. Now with that out of the way, I'm going to start by going to the pack uh, texture packs, All right? Uh, you see if you type in road, there's many individual elements and those are fine. Those are great, but I prefer packs, okay? Uh, there's two I will recommend and I'll play around and see the difference between both of them. First one is a road pack. So I'll go straight up here. And this road pack is probably one of the most popular ones. Uh, its main characteristics are that it includes uh, multiple sections of straight roads, right? Some of these roads include like a middle part with a park. Some of them are just like a straight line. And you can see that it divides it into a grid of four by four. So if you hover your mouse, like in the select option over many of these, you will see that it's four across and four above. When you paste them into the world, each one will have its own individual name. And so you can see that they all priority, priority, three-way, four-way intersections. These are intersections. These are, these are, these four are intersections. These four are straight roads. These are straight roads with park. And these are uh, curves and other type of intersection. Now, what's the main difference? Well, these two, I consider them are pretty much the same. Just road, road. Oh, yeah, the main difference between these two this one is, has a driveway. So if you want to put a house in here, this is a good spot to park the car. And the intersections are basically just very well described. This is four ways of four cars, like cars can come from front four directions and here they can come from three directions in case you want to intersect the road only at one spot. These two, 
their main difference is just a four-way stop and three-way stop. So instead of using headlights, it uses the stop signs. Same as here. So four-way, three-way. Priority, the priority one means that the road that has the yellow stripes, it tends to be bigger than the road that comes from the other intersections. So one of the roads has priority of way. So cars that come from the yellow lines will usually, well, in the real world, drive first and the other ones will stop to see if nobody else is coming. All right. The advantage of road packs is, for example, you can leave it outside of your main world. And to manipulate it, uh, you can always use the duplicate function. So I can duplicate here. And it will create a new copy, which I can select and move. And the advantage of using road packs is that I can leave them all here and go ahead and put them in my real world without any problems. So I can uh, choose and match which ones I want to use. Maybe I want to use this one. So I put it up here and I make it fit in over the other one. Now, a couple of observations is you might want to make them fit in exactly, but there is not much of a problem as long as you keep it consistent. That's why I told you to leave some space between the park and the buildings. If I take a look here, I calculated around how much space I needed to leave and it's pretty much the same. Of course, you can always rotate it. You don't have to make it stay in the same fixed line. And you can even make it in the diagonal. So that's no problem. If you want a more specific angle like, than this eight, uh, it gets a little bit more complex. It still can be done. If you notice each one of these elements, it's something we call a modal, right? A modal is basically a collection of parts that move all together and behave as one single object. Now, if you click on the little arrow next to the model, you can still see that the model is made of different parts and each one of these parts can be modified individually, right? So if, for example, if I want the lines in the middle to not be yellow anymore, you see that this, one of these road markings says bright yellow. I can change it to white, for example. I can go with the other one and change it to white again. So you see, I fundamentally changed the middle of the line to be yellow. This is one of the packages. The advantages of this one that I found is that it is pretty simple. It makes you a very great and unique city. However, it doesn't have many structures you can pull out roads from. That's why uh, even the same road category, I found another one, which I prefer. Crabs road pack, but I prefer to use road pack two, which is version two. You see that's significantly bigger, but it includes more features and has a different aesthetic. So this one, well, it makes my history go a little bit slower because it's a lot of process at the beginning. It has the same rules, the same like yellow lines in the middle. It's, it adds some different elements like a little round ending of a road, block endings. This one, which is usually used for severable areas of a city, parking lots this type of parking lot, this type of parking lot over here with a little wall in the edges, two bridges, mm -hmm, and more green sections. You can definitely use this one as a base for the city, or you can go ahead, if you open the road pack, you'll find the same division. And since it has more of these divisions, it's significantly bigger than the traditional road pack that I found over there. Um, you'll have to rotate through all of this to find the one you like, but the idea is the same. Once you found one, once you find one that you like, oh, it's cool the sack. Sorry, the name of this one is cool the sack. Mm -hmm. Long straight road, medium band, bridge, bridge two. Any one you like, you can still duplicate it, and I'll grab this bridge two. I'll use move tool. Oh, no, move tool. Sorry, I clicked the wrong one and I can bring it down here. Now, this one is actually a little bit bigger. Now, there is one thing you'll notice is that because this one is still inside of the road pack, you won't be able to move it freely, but you can fix it by dragging it from here in this section of the Explorer 
and drag it just below any of these. Well, try not to make it inside another one. Try to make it inside workspace. Okay, and it will sort it alphabetically again. And now, since it's no longer part of the package because you duplicate it and you put it outside, you can even move it with the select tool and it doesn't change a lot. Uh, I believe the rows of this one are a little bit bigger than the other one. So it's basically up to, up to you. Try not to scale it a lot. Uh, one recommendation I have personally, because when you scale it, rows stop fitting in with each other as good as you would like them to be. And that's just because scaling is not really a precise operation to do. So when you scale a row, you might find that they don't no longer fit with the other ones you've previously scaled. It takes some trial and error to see what's the correct scaling for your roads. So you gotta be careful with that part as well. Well, you see here, I can make the bridge fit in here, or I can put it down here. I can rotate it as well. Just gonna put it this here. I only need the green rotator because my city is gonna be like in square fashion. So I'm going to put this one here. I'm going to put some roads. Like then again, I can go here to the crops road pack and drive a straight road over here. I can pull it out of the, of the crab pack. Take some time, put it in as a part of bridge two, but then I'll put it as a part of the workspace. Now that I have it as part of the workspace, I can select it here, straight road, and just move it outside. And there you go. That's how you pull the road. And once you have it outside, you can just keep duplicating this one and keep duplicating the other ones. Once you're done with the roads you want to place, it's pretty easy. Crop road pack, you just delete it. And I'm going to delete the other ones as well because I don't really need them. So you can grab, they're very recognizable because they're the ones with the specific names of roads. Now, two advantages I found with the crab road pack is that it comes already, the models come inside of another model. So it's easier to recognize which one belongs to your program, which ones doesn't. So at the end, it's easier to delete and leave them out of your main program. You don't need it after you place the entirety of the roads of your city. Another advantage is that it has more variety and even has a little bit of grass on the, on the edges. So it looks more nature like, of course you can pick from many different road packs, but I recommend using road packs for your cities as they already fit in with each other perfectly. You can pick them based on the size and you can pick them based on what style of roads you like. For the next part, I'm going to finish the roads. Okay, I'm gonna have the roads finished and we're gonna test some vehicles out inside and some recommendations of which vehicles are good to have in a city. I hope you enjoyed this project and that's it for today. Thanks for watching. Don't remember to hit like and subscribe and we'll see you in the next chapter. Goodbye.